Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, we've had lots of different conditions out here, lots of rain, lots of sun, so everything's doing good. Water's stocked up, solar power is abundant these days, so everything's doing good. Of course, the sun is up much higher, so the days are longer. Uh, so even with some intermittent showers rolling through here, solar's keeping up just fine. So I'll quickly bring everybody up to speed where we kind of left off after the last series of videos and get into what we're going to talk to you about today. So I kind of left everybody hanging about this uh, Power Queen battery here that I have been using for the past couple of years and uh, it's not working now. I do have plans to tear this apart and find out exactly what's going on. Uh, there's a couple things I'm going to do before that happens. And I've got another 48 volt battery on the way and we'll try to revive this by jumping it with that when it gets here. And it's a couple of weeks out coming on a slow boat from China. And what I quickly did when that went down was build a mixed match of 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries to keep my 48 volt system up for high powered devices in the kitchen, especially. Uh, with this balancer from lead time, keeping everything pretty well balanced, actually. And I have had a, a discussion with a couple of you regarding this balancer. We're going to get into this a little more in depth in a future video that I'm working on uh, about how much power this thing actually uses to balance everything out. So that'll be upcoming. But in the meantime, things like my air fryer, uh, coffee maker, you know, electric grill and everything that I use in the kitchen. Uh, everything's running good on that little mix match system that I built. So in the meantime, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was refrigeration and food storage and making the food last longer and how my situation around that has changed over the years. As all of you know, our food is not getting any cheaper and we want to make sure we keep it uh, fresh for as long as we possibly can. So for most of the refrigeration in the past 30 plus years, living 100% off grid, relied on these style of propane refrigerators. This is a Dometic, same thing I had in the mountains of Colorado, uh, seven cubic feet of refrigeration, took about two gallons of propane a week to run this thing on the average and this thing has long been pulled out of service and you can see it's you know suffering from the conditions out here and the seals are not good anymore and even when the seals were good uh, this is an absorption type refrigerator so every time you would open and close the door all your cold air would go out and it would take a bit to get that back up to being cold and the reason we always went with propane refrigeration way back then was the refrigerators, electric refrigerators, were not very efficient back then, and you had to build a lot of extra solar to run one of those. I mean a lot, and solar was very, very expensive back then. So those refrigerators always ran between about twelve and $1,300 for a seven cubic foot. You saw them all over the place for people living off grid. They worked well. We were happy to have that kind of refrigeration. But now, fast forward to where we are now, the solar equipment and everything you need is so much cheaper and the refrigeration that is available now is so much more efficient that it just doesn't make sense to run off of propane anymore. I mean, propane out here, I saw yesterday was four twenty-five a gallon. So we'll call that $10 a week, $40 a month just to keep your little seven cubic foot refrigerator humming along at a minimum right now. Solar panels now are cheap. These are under $100 a piece for 100 watt. And back when we were all living on propane refrigeration, we're talking like $400 a piece back then. So yeah, it would cost you a fortune to run a full-size refrigerator. And the of course, the price of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which we're all gravitating towards over the past few years, uh, they're getting cheaper and cheaper all the time, too, and we have very little problems with them in general. So from seven cubic feet 
of refrigeration and freezing capacity. And by the way, the freezer on that propane refrigerator is extremely small. <laughs> but anyway, now 21 cubic feet, fully electric. This thing, depending on the ambient temperature, draws between 60 and 90 watts on a super hot day. It might be closer to 90 on a, just a normal day, maybe 70-ish watts is all it pulls off the system intermittently to keep the temperature at a very nice cold temperature. And taking a peek at this, now this refrigerator uh, cost with delivery and everything just near $600. So you can see the price difference between this and propane. And it's got humidity control, which is great in these compartments to keep your vegetables, I mean, like this crisp as the day you bought it for weeks, actually. Same thing here. Everything just looks fantastic for the longest time where it didn't last so long in the propane refrigerator. It just couldn't keep up with, with everything. And now the price of all of this is shocking, <laughs> as you all know. You can leave a few things outside here and they won't deteriorate too fast like onions, but other things like lettuce, peppers, you know, tomatoes and stuff like that, that they'll go south pretty fast at this temperature and humidity. Uh, you keep them in refrigeration and you just don't have to make the supply runs as often. And I've done videos that show like a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery now. Any brand will run that refrigerator freezer, 21 cubic feet for, you know, in these conditions out here, 24 hours roughly, give or take, depending on, again, the ambient temperature. Of what's going on i can run that system on any of my uh, systems that i have showed you guys and for those of you that are new you know i have several systems anything can run my refrigerator freezer no problem that's one of the main things to keep running 24 7 out here and because you don't run to the store that often out here and when you do go to the store and stock up on groceries. It's easy to spend hundreds of dollars, no problem. You can probably fit all of that into just one or two bags lately. So it's really imperative to keep that food as fresh and cold out here, as cold as you possibly can, and extend the life of it tremendously. Because if you leave it out, like I said, things just go south real fast. They spoil quickly, but under that kind of refrigeration that I just showed you on that 21 cubic foot uh, refrigerator freezer, you know, once, twice a month, go out, stock up, good to go. Yeah, so eggs are running minimum 10 bucks a dozen out here, minimum, uh, and it can be uh, much higher depending on the availability. Fresh produce, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the other day, you know, bell peppers, for example, were three bucks a piece. So, you know, everything is uh, more spendy. And you don't want any of it going to waste. Waste, ex you know, waste so little food out here because of that refrigeration. Where that propane refrigerator food would spoil in there, much easier. And it just doesn't in one of these newer efficient refrigerator freezers. You I mean you can set the temperature to you want. It's super easy on your system, super easy on your system. Like I said, even if you had no solar tied in to a battery, you know, one battery can run you 24 hours. It was just a backup situation, but I've got solar tied into everything. So, um, you know, it just keeps up. And that's due to the efficiency of what these new units are like now. They were they used to be with the old compressor style refrigerators. Those things were extremely power hungry. And now they're using like on that one, what they call uh, inverter compressor. So efficient. I don't know exactly how it all works, but it works very well. And also this is a nice little thing too. Long time ago. Uh, and I'm talking 30 plus years ago, you know, these weren't that cheap either. That's a five cubic foot freezer right there, packed full of meats, uh, long-term storage, no problem, holds everything 10 below zero easily, 
only draws about 60 watts when it's on and it doesn't kick on that often. And the cost of five cubic feet of meat, uh, 30 years ago, you could go out and buy a car for that. And I'm not kidding. So yeah, you wanna protect your food. Uh, electric is the way to go off grid now. It wasn't always the case for refrigeration and freezing. We relied heavily on propane in rural, rural areas. You know, propane was cheap back then. 30 some years ago, I was paying sometimes 27 cents a gallon. You know, for bulk delivery, I used to have a huge tank. So yeah, it made the difference back then and it offset the cost big time for what it took to run a full-size refrigerator with when you threw in all of the costs of the solar equipment back then. So yeah, now electric is definitely the way to go, no question about it. So many things have gotten better over the years for living out in the boondocks. And all of you that are doing that know what I mean, especially when it comes to all of our electrical producing devices. Uh, they're much better, much more cheap. Uh, the only thing that isn't cheap like it used to be is food, right? So you got to keep that, keep that protected because that's a huge investment now. You know, I should have gone and added up, you know, what everything cost. Uh, that would take a minute to do. Go through the, the freezer, the refrigerator, and the extra freezer on that as well. Uh, there's a lot of money worth of food in there and you don't want to waste any of it. And that's been the big difference. I couldn't get away with that with propane. I just couldn't. Um, like I said, they worked well and we never complained, but no comparison. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys to today about. I was just thinking about that last night and I thought, yeah, for those of you thinking about going off grid, uh, or supplementing your power wherever you live, uh, it's easily done these days. And yeah, protect your food. So, all right, guys, um, there's a lot of stuff in the works behind the scenes right now. And like I said, we're gonna get in and, and figure out. I got two batteries out of all the batteries that I've uh, reviewed over the years and used quite a bit. I've only ever had two fail me and we're going to dig into those and find out what's making them tick or not tick. So that's going to come up, but it's going to be a minute and, uh, and a lot of other things too. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> I've been pretty busy lately on a lot of different fronts. So as always, hope you're all doing well. Let us know how you're doing off-grid or how you're doing with your supplemental power. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Aloha. <sighs> Beautiful day.